I was bound. And it was a craving on the inside. It dictated to me who you're going to sleep with, what you're going to steal. It dictated my entire day. Crack had complete control over Lisa Vini. She didn't know when her misery would end, but she knew when it began. My dad would always um, come in late at night and drinking after being with women, and he would just start beating my mother. Um, I would cry myself to sleep, and he was actually murdered when I was um, about eight years old. In her teenage years, Lisa tried to block out the bad memories with alcohol, marijuana, and sex. By age 15, she was pregnant. When Lisa was five months along, she had an abortion. After that, she partied even harder. She hung out with friends who were into crack cocaine, and before long, she too was addicted. It was like a downward spiral from then, then on. And when I did it, it wasn't like when I took the first hit, you know, someone was standing and say, okay, this one hit is gonna lead to a thousand, or this one hit is gonna cause you to be a prostitute. This one hit is gonna cause you to be addicted. I didn't have a warning. All I knew was that I just wanted more and more and more. Lisa married and divorced twice and had five children. To get crack, Lisa would do just about anything, including prostitution. I would sell my body and sometimes it would be two and three different men at one time. And, you know, they would be dictating to me, you know, what to do, turn this way, turn that way. Guns put up to both sides of my head. Someone standing there with a can of mace, I didn't care. All I wanted was the drugs. They, they had what I wanted. It was just awful. While Lisa chased her next high, she neglected her children for hours and hours at a time. And they would just be screaming, Mama, we're hungry. We're hungry. We, we need something to eat. We want to go home. We want to go home. And then I'm just sitting there getting high. As long as I could get high, I wasn't moving. Lisa's aunt told her about Christ, and eventually Lisa became a Christian. For a while, she was clean, but soon the need to get high was too strong. You know, people really don't understand how the addiction makes you feel on the inside. Fully has control over every area of your body. She began dating a man named Lynn. He took care of Lisa and her children despite her addiction. She also met two women who invited her to church. She went not just once, but returned often. Then something started to change. For the first time in her life, she had hope. Lisa says the longer she stayed in church, the more she wanted to be free from her addictions. She also wanted to be a better mother for her children. The only thing they know about their mom is that their mom was a drug addict and that their mom was a prostitute, and that their mom was always gone. And I felt like I had to do something for my children. While Lisa wanted desperately to change, her battle wasn't over. At the time, she was facing a drug charge and possible jail time, but she didn't ask God for deliverance. She believed that to gain her freedom, she needed to go to jail and out of reach of drugs. Lisa was sentenced to three years in prison. And I told everybody, I said, I'm going to be different this time. When I come out, I'm not going to be the way that I was. Everybody laughed. Yeah, right. But this time, it was different. Lisa kept her promise, and while in jail, she studied the Bible, prayed, and even prayed for other inmates. She was released after serving just four months, and after that, she never used drugs again. I had gotten a taste of God and who God was, and I didn't go back. I didn't go back. I constantly kept seeking God and loving on God and building the relationship with my family. And not only did the Lord save me, but Len was not a believer. He was raised um, Jehovah's Witness. and. He began to go to church with me, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And we now serve God together, 
me and my whole family, we serve God together. Lisa talks about her life in her book, From Misery to Ministry. She now preaches worldwide, telling people God's message of deliverance. I want to be that beacon of light or that voice crying out to others that it's not too late. As long as you still have breath in your body, it's not too late to receive God.